einem Achim Möller, uh, Möller Fine Art in New York and in Berlin. Uh, we, our gallery has been founded in 1972 in London and uh, in 1984 it moved to New York. And uh, in 1990, in 2009, we started our gallery in Berlin. Um, I am in charge of the gallery in New York, and my daughter Stephanie Muller, who is here at the fair, is in charge of the gallery in Berlin. We specialize in 19th and 20th century paintings, drawings, and sculptures, uh, occasionally contemporary art, but mainly. 20th century modern masters. Uh, our specialty is well represented here at Art Cologne. Uh, the last time we exhibited Art Cologne was in 2001, 12 years ago, and we are particularly happy to be back here uh, on this occasion. Uh, our exhibition here consists of works which were shipped from New York and from Berlin, and uh, I think the quality will be very convincing once you have a close look which I think is particularly uh, significant. Uh, is, for example, the work by Hans Mack of 1964, which comes from the uh, collection of uh, Howard Wise. Howard Wise was uh, the dealer of uh, Mack in the 60s, and he showed in his gallery in New York uh, the Gruppe Zero with Pina, Mack and Uecker, etc., and was the first gallery to promote uh, kinetic and video art in the United States. At present in New York, we have an exhibition which is entitled Howard Wise Gallery, Exploring the New, with works by Otto Pina, Heinz Mack, and Julio Le Park, and uh, many other artists, including Takis and uh, uh, Billy Apple, whom he represented in the 60s. So, mm -hmm. Another major work is probably the uh, spray painting by David Smith of 1962. Of course we are used to seeing his sculptures but he also worked on paper and produced paintings which are of course very much related to the concept of his three-dimensional work. You see, This is a very fine example of 1962. Uh, a specialty of mine, if I may say so, is uh, Mark Tobey. Um, and you have two fine examples here, one of 1950, which is entitled um, uh, Ancient Empires on the left, and on the right, untitled 1962. Um, the, uh, uh, it so happens that uh, Mark Tovey was a good friend of Lionel Feininger, and since I happen to be also the expert on Lionel Feininger, uh, writing the catalog resume, representing the estate, and uh, authenticating works for museums and collectors and auction houses worldwide, uh, I got very involved in the work of Mark Tobey. Since there is a beautiful dialogue between Mark Tobey and Paul Klee, we took the opportunity to bring along two works by Paul Klee, one entitled Tauben Monument, 1930, which is on the right, and the other one, Menschen übereinander, which is of later, in the last years of his life, which is here. This we took along because we are announcing our forthcoming exhibition of works by Paul Klee, which is opening at the beginning of May in New York. We do this exhibition in collaboration with the Klee Centrum in Bern, who are lending us several works on that occasion. As I mentioned earlier on, Lionel Feining is a major part of our uh, activity and uh, specialty. And I decided to take along a selection of watercolors and drawings from the early 19, from 1909 up to 1949. Um, uh, here on the left, you see a selection of works that relate to the sea, clouds and regattas and yachts, you see, which are particularly fine works. And then you have the early works here from uh, uh, one of 19. Uh, uh, for 15, and, uh, 1909, 1914, 1912, 1916, etc., which are particularly significant for his early period, where, which, where he combined cubism with his sort of more whimsical and caricature-like 
work. You see? Up here on the left, it's interesting, there's a photograph taken by his son Lux Feininger in circa 1929 uh, on the, on, in, on, in Deep, Deep, on the Baltic Sea. And you can see Feininger standing there, very elegant, with his tie and beautiful suit, photographed by his son Lux, and you see the sun in the shadow as well. This is by Lionel Feininger as well. These are carved and painted wooden toys and uh, houses and figures uh, which were created between the 1920s and the late 1940s. Uh, Lionel Feininger gave these figures and houses to his family and his fr close friends, but usually one or two or three at a time, not a whole set. This particular set, which consists of 68 elements, is the set that belonged to Andreas Feininger, the eldest son, the famous photographer. You see, and we are privileged to have this entire group for sale, and we hope the museum will buy it because we would like to keep it together. The painting in the center, which is of 1943, yeah, it is part of the so-called uh, woodcut paintings, which means in 1920, 1920 when he was at the Bauhaus, he created a woodcut with exactly that composition. And later on, 23 years later, he picked up the, he, he revisited himself and produced a painting after the woodcut. This is very characteristic for him. Yes? It's a particularly fine example of the uh, uh, Capella im Wald, the title. Uh, uh, now, um, these four drawings here uh, are of different, of the Bauhaus period and the early 1910s. On the left you have Benz, which, uh, Benz is a village uh, on Usedom, yes. Uh, and we are fortunate to have two examples of Benz, which is absolutely unique, 1912 and 1924, a, a drawing and a, and a watercolor. So to create a link here to an artist, who, a contemporary artist who we are showing, his name is Hubertus Goyovchik. He's born in 1943. He lives in Krefeld. And we are very privileged to be able to show uh, uh, five works by, of his here on this shelf, you see. And uh, as an introduction to it, I uh, put a work by Crystal of 1964 called The Wrapped Lantern, which is also particularly early and rare. Uh, we have a group of Dubuffet, Jean Dubuffet, which is quite exceptional. I'd like to point out the drawing of 1947, which is entitled The Dentist, Le Dentiste, and it's, a, it's, it's actually scratched, and uh, you should get cl a close look. It's a particularly fine and rare work by this artist. Um, now, I would like to stress our pièce de résistance, yes? which is the most important work, perhaps if you can use that term, is the painting by Otto Dix, which is of 1931, an extraordinary example of the Neue Sachlichkeit. Okay? And uh, it's entitled Die Schwangere, the pregnant woman. And uh, as you can see, he is really quite uh, uh, explicit and uh, hides the face of the woman uh, perhaps this means some, un that he was uncomfortable to some extent himself uh, in painting her, but it's an extraordinary statement of the Neue Sachlichkeit, and it's reserved right now for a museum. Um, to make it a little more lighter, uh, we, uh, 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 we exhibited a work by George Gross of 1928, uh, of a nude, which is of course related to Otto Dix uh, as well, uh, and which is particularly uh, is more humoristic, I would say. Okay. Then we have works by Richard Lindner, Lindner, who is a German artist who emigrated to America, and uh, he. We have three very fine examples: one behind me, and one uh, above the work of Goyovchik. Not to forget the, not to forget this fine watercolor of Emil Nolde, of Fehmann, which is in top quality in pristine condition, and which comes from a private collection in Holland.